I call to order the May 12, 2015 meeting of the Oshkosh Common Council. Welcome to everyone joining us today here in the council, council chamber as well as those watching or listening to Oshkosh Community Media Services. We are happy to have citizens participate in their city government in a way, so welcome to all. Will the city clerk please take the roll call. Herman. Here. Peck. Here. Kansky. Here. Stepanik. Here. Clark. Here. Allison Osby. Here. Cummings. Here. Present seven. We will now have the invocation which will be led by Councilman Herbert Herman followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And we have tonight with the students Landon Spanbauer and Brooke Elstad from Merrill Middle School. So would you all please stand. As we gather tonight, we are grateful for the good things that have come to this city. May our decisions always be ones that are for the well-being of all whom we govern. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Certificate for each of you. Now, be before they, they, when they first got here, I gave them the choice of questions they'd like to answer, and they chose their favorite subject. So, what is your favorite subject at Merrill Middle School? Social studies. Social studies. Uh, my favorite subject is social studies. Social studies. <laughs> <laughs> First on the agenda tonight will be a presentation on the Marion Road water tower design. Mr. Gody, would you please introduce your guest? Certainly, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Linda Moore, who is Senior Project Manager with CH2M Hill, is here tonight to give the presentation. She has been working with the water utility since 2007. Uh, her design team includes many of her staff from around the country and has uh, Dixon Engineering, which is a specialty firm. Uh, with extensive local experience in tower inspection, maintenance, and construction. Um, so Linda's going to give a brief progress report as to where we sit on the Marion Tower uh, replacement. Thank you, Linda. Thanks, Steve. This evening, we're going to provide an overview of the design development activities that have taken place in the last four or five months and um, give you a look ahead, what's coming for the rest of 15 and then beyond into construction. When we wrap up, um, we'll take any discussion or questions the council may have. Prior to beginning design, uh, Public Works Water Utility undertook a study, the Marion Tower study, conducted in 13 and 14, to ask the critical questions, this tower is 80 years old, do we need to replace it? If we do, what volume should it be? And um, is it possible for us to relocate it cost effectively in the city to better meet the community's needs? The water utility used a tool. It's a, a computerized model of the hydraulic distribution system that simulates all the flows and pressures in your water service area to help answer these questions. And the answers are yes. In order to meet customer needs now and for the projected um, years to come, and to provide equivalent levels of fire protection that you do today, the city does need the Marion Tower. Given all the storage that's in the system, the elevated tanks at Ferno, 9th Avenue, down in Southwest, and the clear wells at the filtration plant, the recommended volume for storage is 750,000 gallons. And we use the model to help um, query if we located the tower in different locations, what sort of other improvements would we need to provide to maintain flows and pressures in order to meet all the regulated requirements that the utility must meet? So we looked at a number of alternatives and identified water mains that would either need to be enlarged or replaced or changed in some way to accommodate the tower in a different location. And those water main improvements come with costs. 
So the recommendation from this engineering report, the most cost effective path forward was replace the Marion Tower at its existing location. The tower is located in the heart of downtown in an area that's undergoing an exciting um, urban redevelopment. It's situated between the University of Wisconsin, Oshkosh, the downtown historic business district, and historic neighborhoods. So um, Public Works figured out right away that um, when they wanted to bring a project for you to approve for the construction contract, they wanted a water infrastructure project that not only met the water supply needs for the customers, but the fire protection needs of the community met all the state and federal regulations, but also reflected the preferences of the community. So to um, efficiently and productively get good in input from the citizens of the city, the Public Works Department formed a stakeholder committee. The committee had about 10 members on it, representing a wide range of interests and experience in the community. And the committee met in February and March of this year. And um, these folks very graciously listened to me give them a lesson on Water System 101. And they learned more about their water system than probably they wanted to know. And in particular, um, what are the important issues for a tower project? And what are important issues for maintaining a tower over the relatively long life of this asset? It's going to be around for 80 or 100 years. So we quickly moved into um, what are the aesthetic or visual aspects of the project that are important to the community. We looked at different types of towers, including those you see on this, uh, this slide. All of these towers are commonly used for this kind of installation. And um, they can uh, meet the city's needs in terms of functional requirements. The existing Marion Tower is an example of a multi-leg tower. And then the one on 9th Avenue, for example, is an example of a fluted column tower. In addition to looking at types of towers, we had discussions about the visual impact of the tower. Should it be something that's painted or designed very simply, rather unobstructive, something that blended with the sky or <coughs> the neighboring buildings? Or should it be something that's iconic, makes a statement about the city, or has different types of architectural finishes? And um, at the end of the second meeting, we asked stakeholders to vote on their preferences. This bar chart shows number of votes on the x-axis and different types and styles of towers on the y-axis. And if you look at this, you'll see we have practically a tie between a spheroid type tower, and that's the one that looks like a golf ball on top of a golf tee, and a composite tower, which has a steel tank and a concrete supporting column. About 14 votes for spheroid and 13 for composite. So pretty much a, a tie. And um, definitely a strong interest, a stronger interest in having um, attractive painting or attractive architectural features um, in, as part of the tower. And beyond the kind of skyline impact of the tower from different parts of town, and behind your PowerPoint slides, I put some examples of some of the graphic handouts that we used at stakeholder committees to give people a what if idea if this was Marion Tower today and what could it possibly look like um, in the future. But besides those views from different vistas in town, we also spent quite a bit of time talking about the streetscape and what's going to be attractive for people in the neighborhood and cars driving in the neighborhood. And so we identified that um, it was important for the project to have attractive site landscaping, have a decorative fence that would be of a similar design to other fences in that neighborhood, would include a building to enclose cell phone company equipment that would be finished with architectural materials, brick and other materials that would comply with the Pearl Road, uh, pardon me, Marion Road, Pearl Avenue redevelopment design guidelines. Um, the water utility is very interested in providing some sort of concealment or screen uh, 
feature to the tower to hide antennas so you wouldn't see the antennas hanging off all over the place like um, you would today if you look at the tower. And there was an interest in having decorative lighting on site that would blend with the lighting standards that have been put forth for the river walk, riverfront redevelopment area. So all these features here are ones that we are further defining today and including in our pre-design report and plan to carry forward at this time in our final drawings and specifications. While the Department of Public Works was busy engaging the community or at least um, representatives of the community on this project, they were also <coughs> thinking ahead to construction. This map shows in the orange <coughs> shape the existing property of the Marion Road Tower. It's relatively small. In order to construct a replacement tower on this property, we need to demolish the first tower in order to create space to erect the new tower. And one of the things that the city looked at is what's going to happen during construction, this 12-month construction period to erect a tower and this one or two month period to demolish the existing tower, what happens to levels of supply, um, are the customer service in terms of meeting demands and reliably being able to fight fires with a tower out of service for an extended period of time. They realized they wanted to try to avoid that risk. So they entered into uh, conversations with the redevelopment authority and have just recently agreed to purchase the parcel of land shown in green from the redevelopment authority and that site will serve as the site for the new tower. The two benefits of this path forward for this project is with a separate location for the new tower, water service will be uninterrupted and the existing tower can stay in service all through construction. Another benefit is for the long-term redevelopment plans for this area, that parcel shown in orange as the existing city parcel is surrounded by three sides by a single property owner. So it's a rather unusual property shape and difficult to redevelop. So with the tower being gone, there'll be opportunities to re-parcel that area. Is that the right verb? Repetition it or re realign it so that that land is um, more amenable for redevelopment. So looking ahead, um, we've gone through what we engineers call the design development phase. We're busy doing site investigation, preparing to explore geotechnical conditions at the proposed site, doing site survey, and our immediate next deadline is a preliminary design report. And we'll take that preliminary design report and sit down and review it with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources and with the Public Service Commission of Wisconsin. Those two agencies will have to review and approve to construct the final design drawings and spec specifications. So what we like to do before we uh, get into final design is sit down with them, gather their input, find out what their concerns might be, and then factor all that into final design so that their final permit approval of process moves very smoothly. So we right now anticipate staying on schedule, having design completed this summer, um, bid going out for public bids in the fall, and bringing forth a recommendation for a construction contract in the fall of this year. Um, before I wrap, I just want to say thanks to all the individuals lift, listed on this slide. These are very busy, very talented people who volunteered, read technical information, participated very constructively in meetings and in email, and um, they provided us great input. And I'd like to thank the Redevelopment Authority for their consideration of this project and their plans as they go forward. Thank you. Uh, does anyone on the Council have questions of Ms. Moore or Mr. Godey? If I could. Um, so will we be getting an accurate placement then if the site is different? Right now we have a comparison of where it is existing to where the new will be, but that's not the correct location? Yes. So will we have... Those graphics um, were prepared primarily for the purposes of screening alternatives and helping people kind of visualize. And they, they were not prepared 
um, for the new parcel, which is about 114 feet to um, the North northeast. 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 Yeah. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, we haven't finished the, uh, we haven't gathered the geotechnical, the subsurface information. So depending on what we find out there, uh, you know, location within that parcel is yet to be exactly determined. Anyone else? Any questions from the audience? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is citizen statements to council. Citizens are to address the council only. Statements are limited <coughs> to five minutes, must address items that are not listed on the council meeting agenda, are limited to issues that have an impact on the city of Oshkosh and the common council that may address at a future meeting and must not include endorsements of any candidates or any other electionary. Good evening. Uh, my name is Gary Gray, 815 West <coughs> uh, Um at the, last, at the end of the last meeting, there was a three-person committee set up to look at the uh, Common Council compensation uh, and uh, the purpose of that is to research uh, how council members are uh, paid in the government of disabilities. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why, why there needs to be a three-person uh, committee to do that, but putting that aside, uh, I'd like to uh, make some co comments in regards to the, what I perceive as operations. Now, basically, two, maybe two and a half, three reasons to look at compensation. One is uh, to consider increasing the survey. Two is uh, making the position easier to attain or more desirable. And three is to reduce the survey. Well, number three is basically uh, not used, so I'm going to drop that. In regards to number two, m making the position easier to attain or want it, um, some people have said that perhaps increasing the amount of money paid to the council members would attract more people to, to uh, run for council. I am not sure that is correct. Um, if if we uh, took a look at the last several years, um, for for for, for uh, basically the April uh, uh, elections, spring elections, uh, for three seats on the council, in 2009 there was six, 2010 there was six, 2011 five, 2012 four. 2013, two, even though, even though there was three seats, uh, to, uh, 2014, four, and 2015, three. Um, also, if we take a look at the last two times that there was a vacancy on the council, um, a m month ago, there was eight people applying for the position, for the one position. And six people for the 2013 vacancy. Um, it is interesting, I think, to see how many people are interested in applying for a vacancy. Uh, I just uh, uh, don't think that the uh, increasing the salary to get people to to run is necessarily the correct answer. Uh, the, another possible, possible uh, aspect, well, okay. Um, also, as, as you uh, will uh, recall at the last meeting, when people are making presentations, they said they, they, were, they were not available to uh, get signatures on petitions, which is fine. I guess the, the way to handle that is to move the signature petition uh, time from uh, December to April, but unfortunately, that's state 
regulated, and that's not possible, I don't think. Uh, another uh, aspect of this is the number of signatures needed to be on the ballot. I have done some limited research, and there are only two cities that require 200 to 400 signatures, the city of Oscars and the city of, uh, city of uh, Milwaukee. Uh, most others have signatures requirements of 100 to 200. Uh, if a person wants to run for common council in the city of Madison, they need 20 to 40 signatures. So may, 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 maybe that's something that could be looked at. Um, the last reason uh, for increasing the, uh, the salaries, uh, a lot of times people feel that since prices are going increasing that service should increase, which I guess is an understandable way of looking at it. Uh, it's also maybe an uh, attempt to, uh, as the old saying goes, keep keeping up with the Joneses or keeping up with the neighbors. I uh, think that when, when the Common Council here in Oscars uh, decides to vote for increase for the uh, salary for the council people, they should take a look at the chapter 64 cities and see how that compares with the proposed increase. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Sorry, I don't recall if we were on the agenda or in the uh, open comment section, but we're happy to um, share a little with you right now for just a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm Steve Eliason, 1528 Grove Street here in Oshkosh. And I'm Eric Smotlick, um, 1855 Green Lane in Oshkosh. Uh, just before you tonight, really as an informational kind of FYI, I wanted to share a little bit about our sailing and outdoor youth sports program uh, that's been underway for a number of years here in Oshkosh uh, as of last year, including a pretty robust winter. Uh, sports and outdoor activities for youth in the community. You'll see posters coming around from our program. So just in brief, uh, the history of the program began in 2009 uh, with one charter school here in Oshkosh. And the goal really was to bring for sort of the world of science, education, through sailing to students in Oshkosh. Uh, a couple of years at uh, 60 students for that program. Year three, we moved up to 300 students, so five days uh, of 60 students per day. So sail week is born. Uh, we've progressed to uh, a count of 1,300 students through the program in 2013. Last year, 2014, 2,300 students through our sailing program. Uh, headquartered, based, founded here in Oshkosh, so we operate uh, programs also in Sheboygan County and the west shore of Green Bay in the Oconto Marinette uh, region. But overwhelmingly, we're serving uh, Oshkosh Public School District students and then other um, students through direct department program, Christine Ann Center, Boys and Girls Clubs of Appleton, Oshkosh, and Sheboygan. And, and a host of others. Uh, so really wanted to share uh, the program, sort of the footprint we leave here in Oshkosh. Uh, what, all, all that we do on the water is based in Menominee Park from our Menominee Park Beach. Uh, we have, uh, as you might imagine, a, a wealth of boats, a big fleet of uh, youth sailboats, and we have a, a fantastic army of volunteers that make this happen. And I might turn it over to Dr. Eric for just a minute to talk a bit about the program as well. Okay. Well, thank you. And I mean, basically, it's also I would like to invite each and every person, if, if they wanted to kind of see us in action and things like that, um, that we're going to be out over the next the two weeks after Memorial Day weekend pretty much every day. And then um, out on Thursday nights, and we have some beautiful, beautiful catamarans. We have some also um, some smaller thick style sailing boats that, um, that are used for, um, for kids and things like that. So, and I mean, Really, it's it's kind of an invitation to the city to be involved. Um, I'm a family doctor working with Theta Care. I've been involved for the last couple of years, and Theta Care is really invested and interested in this, um, in some of the stuff. And I know, alluding to later on the agenda, <coughs> talking a little bit about weight of the valley and those types of things, getting kids out, getting kids moving, and um, really, this is a win for. It's been a win for me. Pretty much everybody who touches this enjoys it, and. Um, we if if the city wishes to be more involved with us on a um, on a closer level, working on improvements and things like that, the 
things like the, the boathouse or um, <coughs> other sort of venues, um, we are welcome and open to work with, work with folks. I know Steve's been working a little bit with, with Mark Roloff on this. I'm going to start working with Ray Maurer um, from the Parks Department um, a little bit more. And um, so you may hear from us or see from us again. So we figured we'd want to be um, just let you know um, what's going on and that you're invited to come and check it out. Are there any questions at all? I'll just make a comment. I'm very aware of the program for obvious reasons, and you, you're doing a fantastic job, so thank you. Oh, thanks very much. Thank you. We, we very much appreciate the support of the, that the city has given us so much. If I could just add briefly, too, we've had really good, really good conversations and, and uh, robust partnership with parks. Um, in fact, we had some good news at the Parks Board last night. We've had a, just the, the staff has been fantastic. Working with the city manager Roloff has been fantastic. And, um, and come on down and see us sometime or hop on a boat if you'd like to. Thanks so much. Thank Great. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Are there any other citizen statements? All right. Next on the agenda is a public hearing, hearing for resolution 15 234, approval of final resolution for special assessments for stormwater or storm sewer laterals various locations. Is this a three time? Mm -hmm. All right, this, is uh, this has to be read three times. Uh, resolution 15-234, approval of final resolution for special assessments for storm sewer laterals, various locations. Resolution-15-234, Approval of final resolution for special assessments for storm sewer laterals, various locations. And this will be on the agenda next time for no. No, we're going to vote on it this evening. Okay. All right. We now need a motion. I'll make a motion. I will second. second that motion. A discussion? Herman? Aye. Peck? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Stepanik? Aye. Clark? Aye. Alice Mosby? <coughs> Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Next are the cons consent agenda items. Uh, consent agenda items are those items of a routine administrative nature that are voted on by the council in a single roll call vote. Staff recommends approval of all items. Any member of the public or common council may request an item be removed from the consent agenda for discussion. And we're going to make a bit of a change here now. Are there any members of the council that would like an item removed before we go through it? Okay. Approval of bills presented by the finance director. Receipt and filing of common council minutes from April 28, 2015. Receipt of claim filed with City's Insurance Company, Germantown Mutual Insurance Company on behalf of Nulty's Towing for alleged damage to the vehicle from a fire truck. Grab Polish for alleged damages to his trailer while using the boat ramp. Brett Wilkins for alleged damages to his vehicle from the boat ranger scratching it. Resolutions 15-235. Support the efforts of the weight of the Fox Valley. Resolution 15-236, approved conditional use permit for an exception to the downtown overlay district standard modification 401 North Main Street. Land Commission recommends approval. Mr. Mayor, yes. there is a, someone who wanted to comment on number five. Okay. I thought you were going to read the whole thing. It's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had time. <laughs> My name is Emily Deeringer. I am with the uh, Winnebago County Health Department and Rethink Winnebago's Healthy Living Partnership. And just on behalf of those two entities, um, I want to express our support for um, Resolution 15 235. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm the shorty, so I got to <laughs> lower this here. I'm Julia Salomon, and I am a member of the Weight of the Fox Valley. Um, I just wanted to share with you the vision of of the weight of the Fox Valley, which is a community that together achieves <coughs> and maintains a healthy weight at every age. And this could mean many different things. 
um, but we are here to support the city of Oshkosh and also to accept the support of city of Oshkosh in support of the resolution uh, for the weight of the Fox Valley. Thank you. Thank you. Resolution 15-236, approved conditional use permit for an exception to the downtown overlay district standard modification 401 North Main Street Plan Commission recommends approval. Resolution 15-237, award bid for dual steer tandem axle truck chassis with dump body equipment and leaf vacuum for street division to JX Peterbilt Monroe Truck Equipment and Step Equipment. Resolution 15-238, award bid for HVAC replacement main hall unit for Grant Opera House to August Winter and Sons. Resolution 15-239, award, award bid for roof replacement areas 5 and 7 for Oshkosh Public Museum to Northeastern Roofing. Resolution 15-240, approve special Class B licenses and operator licenses. Any comments? I have a question. Emily, if you could come back up a minute, please. just want to ask you something. Sure, Steve. 15-235. Could you just give us a little bit of um, what's happening in Oshkosh with this program? I mean, I know it's the way to the Fox Cities. I'm familiar with it from being involved with Rethink and some of that, but could you just give us a little update on what's happening in the Oshkosh area with this program? Oh, sure. Um, one of the biggest things that we're trying to do with Way to the Fox Valley is really make it a regional thing. Um, a lot of times when, when the area, especially Fox Valley, is talking about regional, it, it kind of excludes Oshkosh. Um, so from the health department standpoint and from Rethink, we're really trying to make sure that Oshkosh is included in a lot of those efforts. Um, so we're really trying to look at aligning and being really strategic about what we're working on together so we don't have 15 of the same type of thing going on all at the same time because that's a big waste of everyone's time and money and effort and energy. Um, so right now, Way to the Fox Valley is... Um, working on two um, big areas. One is workplace wellness and one is active communities. So with the workplace wellness group, um, there's representation from several different businesses in um, the Oshkosh area as well as Nina, Manasha, Appleton, all over. Um, and they're working on a couple different things to make it easier for businesses to um, incorporate workplace wellness activities into their um, their, their employment, their workplace, whatever. So, for example, the city of Oshkosh is doing an employee wellness fair on Friday, and Julia is going to be there talking about Way to the Fox Valley. And um, so lots of those kinds of things, and kind of learning from each other and saying, hey, we're, we're one entity, we're doing something really great, um, and we want to share that with other folks because they might not have a you know, workplace wellness expert on their staff or um, something like that. So it's really a lot about kind of aligning efforts and learning from each other, you know, figuring out what's going well and how can we replicate that in other places. Um, from the active community standpoint, there's um, kind of two parts going on right now. Um, one is these resolutions in support of Way to the Fox Valley that are aligned with the, the East Central Wisconsin Regional Bicycle Pedestrian Plan. Mm -hmm. um, so saying, hey, these plans are out there. Um, we, we hope that um, local municipalities will recognize those as important ways to um, not only keep all of our residents safe, um, to make sure that all of our transportation um, networks accommodate all types of users, people that are walking, people that are biking, people that are using transit, as well as people using cars. Um, and then also, in turn, that helps people use active transportation to, to help maintain a healthy weight, which is related to weight of the Fox Valley. So um, we've got, in Winnebago County, we've got our county bicycle pedestrian plan that is just starting to get going for the rural parts of the county. And that's going to be um, connecting up with the Oshkosh specific city bike ped plan as well as the regional bike ped plan. So more on that to come. I'm sure we'll come talk to you guys again sometime soon about that. Um, and then from a, a kind of a standpoint of getting people aware of, of all the great facilities we currently have for um, bicycling and walking and being active, um, routes and trails, um, we're launching something in the next couple weeks called Passport to Active Living. And it's a 12-week program um, designed to help people um, take a journey and be familiar. Oh, visual aid. Put it right down there. <laughs> Do you want this? Put it right down there. On that Put it right on that. There, there you go. There you go. Oh, technology. <laughs> um, so the, um, the passport. Turn it on. What? Oh, I got turned on. How do I do that? 
No, 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 it'll be okay. Just zoom a little bit. No, I Scott, you get it? I'm sorry. <laughs> Scott, help Scott? me. <laughs> oh, it isn't. I don't have Scott to it. Thanks, Scott. Oh, look at that. Great. Um, <laughs> and this is um, meant to help people explore our current surroundings. So we've got great trails and facilities in Winnebago County, like the Weawash Trail uh, that cuts right through the city of Oshkosh. We've got the Friendship Trail on the north end um, and, and the Trestle Trail as well. So we want people to be out using those facilities because we've got a lot of great opportunities for people to be physically active, especially outside in the summertime. So this, this is something that can kind of help them or kickstart them into, into using our existing routes and trails while we're working to incorporate more routes and trails and facilities and making those connections so people can get to where they want to go for recreation and transportation. Is that more than you wanted to know? No, no, okay. that's perfect. <laughs> I, that, that's the information I want to get out into the community. So. Oh, super. <laughs> no, just pass some resolution doesn't always do it, so yeah. getting a little more of the information. Tell your story. My well, she story. took the time to come here, so I want you to make sure you. Oh, awesome! Put a I had to, I had to like effort, run so. right after a boot camp class. Yeah. I'm like super sweaty right yeah. now. Yeah, girl. Well, thank you very much. Don't, Appreciate don't let me come up to the front. Well, <laughs> it's all girls. Any other council members have any question? But you answered mine. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Any further questions? I need a motion. I would move to approve the consent agenda. Second. I will second. The city clerk, please take please take the roll. <coughs> Herman? Aye. Peck? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Stepanik? Aye. Clark? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, next we have the agenda. Pending ordinance 15-241, approval of relocation of the pedestrian highway hybrid beacon on High Avenue. Any discussion? Well, first. Was that public? And now we'll come back to council. Okay. Council discussion? Uh, I would move for approval of 15241. I would second. I do have one question for Mr. Uh, Roloff or Mr. Godey. Can you kind of explain what's going on with the relocation of this beacon on High Street? I I'd be happy to um, the pedestrian movement patterns on the university campus and maybe mr. Stepanek can validate this um, originally the university felt that the students would be exiting on the northernmost uh, exit along High Avenue and in reality they're using the main entrance so we're really moving it to where the the student body the, the pedestrian traffic is is naturally going um, so that's really what this is about moving it to that location would you validate that as a as, a, <laughs> as one of those pedestrians <laughs> I would yeah it's um, it's kind of an unsafe intersection so I'm glad that the the city's gonna do this students cross right there it's uh, right in front of Sage um, which is where most students have classes and it stops traffic and so I think this will be a much uh, much safer thing for students okay thank you <coughs> Will the city clerk now take the roll call? Herman? Aye. Peck? Aye. Uh, Pansky? Aye. Stepanik? Aye. Clark? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Next we have a new ordinance and there will be no formal action taken on this item at this meeting and that's ordinance 15-242. Approve amendment to section 27-59 bicycle licensing to create a group registration fee for residents of the same household and annually suspend bicycle registration registration fees during April and May uh, mr. Mayor? mayor for the sake of time I would like to make a motion to waive the rules and adopt this on the first reading I'll second second. That. council discussion the only thing I just want to add to Ms. Pansky's motion was I was gonna do the same thing we've approved this five of my plus years on council every year so well to just get it in as an ordinance and we won't have to do it again so it makes sense to move it on to first reading any comments from the audience take the roll call please Herman aye Pat aye Pansky aye Stepanik aye 
Clark? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? I'm sorry. Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. I will now make a motion to approve Ordinance 15 242. Second. Sec Discussion? Comments from the audience? Please take the roll. Herman? Aye. Peck? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Stepanik? Aye. Clark? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. All right, next on the agenda is council discussions, direction of the city manager, and future agenda items. Mr. Roth? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the uh, workshop to review our health insurance program is scheduled for June 9th, 445. Uh, so uh, we'll be providing you information at that time. We're getting a lot of good data from Associated uh, Financial Group. That's our new consultant on that. Um, any questions about that? I think, I think we're in fairly good shape about that. If not, uh, workshop or discussion with local state legislators. I did have a chance to talk with Senator Gudex and Representative Hintz. They're certainly interested. Um, we had originally talked about perhaps doing it on a council evening. If you want to do it soon, that's probably the absolute worst time to do it. They're pretty much in Madison Tuesday through Thursday. That stretches into Mondays and Fridays. We're probably looking at maybe like a morning meeting. <clears throat> the, uh, the mayor and I know that from uh, the Chamber of Governmental Affairs Committee, that they regularly meet the second Monday of the month. The chamber takes off for the summer. So actually the second Monday of the month may be uh, the most opportune time. So I'm, I'm looking at perhaps June 8th. If you could look that on your calendars, I'll make the formal invitation, but that seemed to be what uh, the legislators indicated would be, a, would be a good date. So if you wanna just kinda keep that in mind, that would be great. June 8th? June 8th, and it would likely be a morning Type of meeting it, first. When you say morning, like seven thirty. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. work for me, but that's okay. Okay. And I think they indicated that they were open to doing this on a somewhat regular basis. So we'll have to figure out what we want to do on a regular basis. But right. I knew that to get a first time in, they're they're used to the second Monday of the month, so we may as well go for it. Just if I could make a comment on that. I have a commitment every Monday from basically Memorial Day to Labor Day in the mornings. So um, Monday mornings are not a good time for me. Okay. Keep that in mind. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, with respect to the presentation with the Long Range Finance Committee on levy limits, um, what we were thinking is perhaps incorporating that. Uh, well, maybe I'll let the, the chair of the committee, you're the chair of the committee, correct, Mr. Peck? Yes, I am. Okay, maybe you could. Uh, right from the horse's mouth in terms of the committee what the committee <laughs> talked about uh, bas basically we we uh, Ms. Larson and I uh, have worked with uh, Ellers our bond consultants and have uh, uh, a presentation that we would like to make to the Long Range Finance Committee regarding levy limits we thought the fact that we have two well one brand new council member one who has served a short period of time but then also, all of us that are sitting on council, I know that we wrestle with levy limits, uh, and they seem to change every year. But what we wanted to do was uh, kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. So we wanted to schedule a joint meeting of, or a, a joint workshop meeting, whatever we want to call it, with the Long Range Finance Committee. Uh, we would like to do it as quickly as possible as we are heading into budget season. Uh, generally, our uh, Long Range Finance Committee meetings are the first Wednesday of the month. So, um, you know, again, it's another it, it's another evening that we would ask be asking you to commit to. That would be June third. Um, so, I would ask council members to look at their calendars and um, see if June third would work. Uh, we. We uh, gavel in at 5.15 for our meeting, so we would uh, do that at the first part of our long-range finance meeting on June the 3rd. That date is good for me. Yeah, works for me. Should be fine. 
All right, then Mr. Roloff and I will work with Ms. Larson as well as uh, Mr. Taves at uh, Ellers and we'll schedule it for uh, Wednesday, June 3rd. <coughs> Where do you guys generally meet? Uh, we meet in the uh, room back there. 404? Yeah, 404. So. may have to extend the tables so so that uh, with that um, I'll hand it back to mr. Roloff I think that pretty much says it, it looks like June 3rd work so uh, we'll work towards that and uh, talk to mr. Taves about being here and then lastly was the uh, the item from mr. Herman okay uh, discussion on panhandling I think all of us have either gotten phone calls or emails or concerns from citizens concerning um, the problems they're having on the west side of Oshkosh, particularly in the Walmart area, a little bit in the McDonald's area on the uh, east side of 41, um, but in general. And I know that this has been brought up to council prior to. Um, we all got some information, I believe, from the city attorney on it. Um, I just think that um, it's time we look at an ordinance to uh, limit or prohibit panhandling in the city of Oshkosh. I think it's a bad, um, kind of sets a bad example um, from the citizens I'm hearing. And we got a, a kind of a letter tonight from a citizen concerned about, about it that um, I think we need to take a look at it. And um, I don't think we need a workshop, but I think we need to take a look at a couple other uh, maybe municipality ordinances, as the city attorney has mentioned. There's been some changes in, in the laws pertaining to this topic as far as uh, f um, First Amendment rights and things like that. So um, I think it's time. Um, so I decided I bring it forward. I don't know what other council members feel. Um, so it's open discussion. Ms. Lawrence, you have something to say? As Council Member Herman noted, there are First Amendment concerns with that. So I would advise you that an outright prohibition against panhandling is not going to be an available option to you panhandling, um, any kind of charitable solicitation does have some First Amendment protection. So a court looking at anything you do with relation to restricting that is going to look at whether you have content neutral time, place, and manner restrictions and whether they serve a significant governmental interest. In the case of the panhandling, um, we did have a brief discussion at our, our department head meeting I'm not aware of, and I don't believe Chief Goyle was aware of any um, significant issues with it. My understanding is most of the people are, are standing holding signs with some kind of message on it, asking for donations. We haven't had the instances of the aggressive type of panhandling. That's the type of regulation that's been upheld. And there has been, in recent years, more um, effort toward legislating panhandling, but there has also been more litigation regarding it and the restrictions that are placed on it. So anything that you would want to do, I would urge some caution moving forward. And also, um, you're going to want to make some findings that it's really necessary, which at this point, I don't believe that the police department has had no, um, significant issues or complaints in regard to the types of things that we can regulate. And in some, some cases, even those types, we have disorderly conduct ordinances, we have battery, we have walking out into traffic ordinances. So even some of the things that, that could potentially happen, we actually could deal with under ordinances that we already have. So it just would urge, urge some caution in moving forward. The city attorney had put a memo together back in 2010 that was intended to be in your packet tonight, so I apologize it's not there, and it pretty much states a lot of what she's already mentioned. Uh, but we, we could do an aggressive panhandling ordinance, but the, the experience we've had, we haven't seen a lot of that, and the police generally do that. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. Um, we could put it on the books and, and take a look at it, but uh, in terms of us, the flat-out prohibition <coughs> just, isn't, uh, just isn't legal. And that would also prevent um, panhandling is a broad definition that could also prohibit solicitation by charitable groups and things like that. So you want to you want to factor all those things in uh, as you're doing that. 
uh, I sorry you didn't get that information I'll be happy to make sure it's in your week packet uh, you did get a um, uh, in your packet this evening there was a, a little typewritten letter that somebody had written sharing their experiences that I think were similar to what uh, Councillor Herman was talking about so we want to make sure you had both sides um, it's a gentle issue that you have to deal with um, but we'll get you that 2010 memo because it still rings pretty true uh, nowadays so, so if, if I mean I, I can understand the concerns of the citizens okay but so if, I, if I'm hearing council correctly and, and council C-O-N-S-E-L yeah. as opposed to C-O-U-N C-I-L uh, if I'm hearing council correctly we we could be wandering into a thicket of some places some place that we don't want to necessarily go there are ordinances on the books that that should there be issues th that we have ordinances on the books that address things as needed but that to specifically go and put something on record while it may be a feel-good thing it could be actually a very bad thing for the city in that we would be exposing ourselves to litigation correct okay thank you I would be interested in knowing what other cities are doing and I guess with that though there should probably be some solutions uh, it's probably one of the biggest things from when I was out collecting signatures as well as out in the public that is a concern because it doesn't make a number of people uncomfortable so I guess I at least would like to see what other other cities are doing and I can provide that memo we addressed some of that sure in there any further comments <clears throat> all right now we move to council member announcements and statements it's me uh, I'm, I'm asking that all council members get to me by this Friday the 15th of May their preferences for serving on various boards and commissions and uh, rank them uh, you know one to three as far as your highest priority and so everyone knows especially the newer members that seniority does take precedent so with that um, we now move to city manager announcements and statements. Mr. Roloff? Oh, no. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm sorry, citizen, citizen statements. Citizen, statement. uh, citizen Citizens are to address the council only. Statements are limited to five minutes. Must address items that are not listed on the council meeting agenda. Are limited to issues that have an impact in the city of Oshkosh. And the common council may address at a future meeting. <coughs> must not include endorsements of any candidates or other electioneering. Your name? Good evening. My name is Lee Williams, 331 Broad Street. Um, my biggest concern lately, and this has been over the last year or two, is I'd like to see Oshkosh stand up on its own instead of following suits with Appletons and, Osh and Fond du Lacs and Nina Manash and all this kind of stuff. If we're going to do something, let's be a leader and for a change instead of being a follower. And I mean, it's not all bad. I believe Green Bay was the first one to put a, a river walk in. Shortly after that, Oshkosh did, and Appleton, and all this kind of stuff. I'm not saying it's all bad, but let's be a leader instead of a follower for a change. Uh, if I could, could I make one statement on what he talked about there with the panhandling? And I know that I'm not supposed to do this, but what would happen, and maybe the city attorney could answer, answer this question, if we put a time limit on it? Can we do something like that? Where if you go out, and I... There's three spots for particular, like Mr. Herman said, Walmart, the McDonald's, and the quick trip out on 9th in the frontage road there. What happens if we come up and say, hey, you can only do this for X, Y, Z hours? Can you do that? I don't understand. We, well, I, like like okay, a time okay. limit from noon right. to 4 or what? Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying if they come out and say... Uh, John Doe wants to go out and panhandle. 30 minutes? No, 30 I, minutes or? You would have to, a court is going to look very suspiciously at that because oh, what no, is I'm your, just, I'm just you would need to have a significant interest <coughs> in why that time limit is, is necessary. Well, I, I'm just asking. So I'm, they're they're okay. going to look very suspiciously at that. Okay. But yeah, like I said, that I'd like to see Oshkosh be a leader for a change instead of a follower. I mean, like the Riverwalk, I mean, it's a beautiful thing that you guys have done down here at the Riverwalk, but we followed Appleton and Green Bay with their river walk. They started theirs first, and we kind of jumped on their bandwagon. That's, you know, if we're going to do something, like let's do something with the Pioneer if we're ever going to do anything, and say, hey, let's put in a beautiful thing. 
and say Oshkosh is the best and they did it first. Thank uh, you. Mr. Williams, I, I appreciate your comments, but j just one thing that, that I wanted to point out is Oshkosh has taken the lead in many things. Do you, re do you remember the Lions? The Lions. The Lions that we had few, a few years ago that mm -hmm. were throughout the city? I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not saying it's all bad, okay? I'm, but because I the know. thing is, is that if you are aware that Appleton copied Oshkosh. That's the first I've ever heard of it, okay? Yeah. So, so I, I, understand, I understand what you're saying, but Oshkosh has led in many things. Uh, no, I'm, you know, so I'm just saying, just like I said, with Mr. Roloff there, he's, you know, he's doing a good job, but for once it's like, let's see this town be more aggressive in doing things in this town instead of, geez, Appleton did this and Green Bay did this. Let's do that. You know, I mean, it's nice to have ideas from other towns, but... You know, maybe, maybe bigger or better things could come out of it. Thank you very much. Just one comment to Mr. Williams' comment. There are a lot of things in the planning stages right now that no other community is doing. So yes. I, it's, a time, it's taking time to roll them out, but you'll be surprised what's going to happen in the next 12 to 24 months. I would echo that comment as well. On to city manager announcements and statements. I always hang on to some of these. I, I think I'll, I'll share this with you. It's like nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has finally arrived. That was Victor Hugo who came up with that. I've been saving this quote for such a long time. Sometimes it takes time, and I think uh, if you take a look at some of our visionaries for the Riverwalk, they brought that up in the 1960s. So it was before many of our council members were even born. But uh, not all of us. Careful. Me. No. Yeah, watch it. <laughs> Now I, didn't, I didn't make the age comment this time. <laughs> All I'm pointing out is the majority of my council is now younger than me, and so I'm going to make sure I acknowledge that because <laughs> I'm in trouble if I don't. So I just, with all due respect to my minority council members, I just wanted to have that out there because I think it's, it, some timing is everything sometimes, and I uh, think that There's that's There's a lot of things important. in the planning stages right now. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, and we were talking about litigation earlier. You better watch out. There could be some age discrimination suits coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm a protected I'm class too. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I really got off tar target on that. Uh, council Chamber Modifications Committee. Mr. Urban provided a memo in the council packet. Uh, several of the council members were members of the committee. Uh, if you want to elaborate on that, but the idea is to get our technology uh, things done this year because all well, those are the ones in our CIP, and the committee felt that. Uh, stretching out over the next two years the remainder of the improvements next year would be some of the physical things in this room specifically carpeting and things like that but I think the council felt that the DS itself was in fine shape uh, holding up um, the chairs need a little work but not replacement uh, so doing little things like that to uh, to uh, modernize it uh, would be in order some of the, and, and just if I'm some of the things we also are discussing are bringing some things up into compliance <coughs> one of them would be installing a hearing loop in here which complies with the ADA um, I think Scott you can you get a picture of one of the monitors uh, I think we're, we're going to be replacing the monitors I mean as people uh, with that for, for visuals but then again too I think I don't think there's a lot of our constituents that have TV sets that look <laughs> like that now I do. <laughs> there we go. Well, yeah, I'll, let, I'll let that go. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so it, it's basically it, it's to it's to better present our information to our citizens and to get our citizens more involved in their government. So it, it it's really, uh, and all of us have said that that's what something that we want to do is get more citizens involved. And I applaud the people that are still sitting around here. It'd be nice if we could have a full house all the time. And the one goal through this whole process has been to, to get the in information uh, in a more comprehensive, understandable, interesting format to people who are watching us on uh, Oshkosh Community Media Services. So mm -hmm. There's a lot of information on the agenda that's um, we have to show it visually rather than having it read so much. Okay. So back to you, Mr. Wall. Thank you. Um, with that, the um, next item, state contract co cooperative purchase uh, pickup truck in the Parks Department. I have a memo on that. Uh, we followed the uh, purchasing policy and acquired it through the state contract uh, and saved some money doing that. Uh, the third item in my section is going to take a little bit of time, but 
Council has received a copy of our citizen survey for 2015. I just wanted to highlight a few things. Now, uh, there's a lot of stuff in there. Certainly happy to answer any questions you might have about other details, but just a few observations. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Professor Carl Nolenberger and his policy analysis class in the uh, Masters of Public Administration program. This is the seventh year that they've done this survey for us, so we're very appreciative of what they do. And they do it for a very uh, reasonable cost, which is, which is also much appreciated. Um, one of the things that the students pointed out this year, actually, there were two observations they made about the survey. Um, they're a little concerned about potential age bias. Don't want to go back to the jokes from a couple moments ago. But the, um, the survey showed that about 45% of the respondents were age 60 or older. That does not match up with the demographic for the city. So there may be a slight age bias in that. They still felt that it probably it reflected the overall community feelings based on uh, the methodology they used. But they wanted to point that out, and that may come out in some of the results. Uh, the other one that could be a bias is mostly homeowners rather than renters. So again, there could be a bias built into that. But I think for the most part, it's still uh, a valid um, survey. <coughs> if you take a look at page two of the survey, one of the other additions that they made this year was they added, this uh, had to do with the question about how often or frequently do you use, <coughs> excuse me, city services. And they added the simple option of saying never. And there are certain services that, that you've never used, you hope you never use. Um, for example, EMS. You hope you never have to call EMS. But of course, when you do, you want them to be there. You want certainly the excellent service. But you see a lot of those on page two that several, uh, a lot of services that people have never used. If you're not a golfer, you're not going to use Lakeshore Golf Course. Um, some people don't use Pollock Aquatic Park. So those are some of the things that are in there. Um, one of the comments that they made was uh, that may reflect why the library has 75 plus percent usage. Older population tends to use the library more. I don't know if that's true or not, but that was one of the things that was pointed out. So usage was, a, was a, an interesting issue that, that they wanted to point out. In terms of the overall opinions, you know, there's been some concern about public safety in light of some of the things that happened last fall over on the university. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the perceptions of safety have remained unchanged from over the last few years. There's a slight dip this year from 14 to 15, but it's really, as people saying, there, we feel safe rather than very safe. Still very, very high on the safety. Um, and the question is asked specifically about um, the safety of your neighborhood, because that's a little closer to home. And if you take a look at page 14, um, the numbers of very safe and safe are virtually identical, in fact, maybe even higher for safe in 2012 than they were in 2015. So we haven't changed that much over that period of time. But comparatively speaking from last year, and maybe in light of some of the incidents, that that changed it. But overall, it's still very high on safety. So. Uh, the students were, their observation was, don't overthink the safety issue. We still have a very safe community. Um, the other traditional things that we've talked about in the past are those services that are rated high in terms of importance and low in terms of quality of service. Those are really the areas where you stand to see the, the greatest amount of improvement. Um, there's a lot of services that are ranked very important and high in quality. We're very proud of those, but you know what can we do better? And those are some of the issues that were pointed out. And I draw your attention to um, page 33. It says services de de identified high importance, low quality, snow and ice removal. I always point out this survey is done in the winter, so there's a, there may be a little uh, seasonal bias into that, but it's consistently mentioned. And our policy is limited on snow removal, but clearly high importance, low quality. Um, enforcement of codes, um, what was interesting about that one is it's legitimate, that said, but the frequency of use of that service is very low, so some of that could be a perception issue. Um, street maintenance, you know the story, we've been hearing it for years, and that's something that we've been putting more efforts in, but it's there. Street repair, neighborhood revitalizations, and housing. So those are some of the ones that are pointed out. Um, I think there's acknowledged improvement, and if you get into the details on the individual services and you track it over the last 
seven years we've done this survey, you've seen some movement in some of those areas, but there's always room for improvement. And so that's uh, a couple of the other things. And then the one that uh, was the most interested, the most awaited, I think, out of all the, um, uh, the issues was uh, the, the bonus question. We've always added a, a question for the year and then take it out because it's more of a topical type of thing. And you recall last year, um, goes back to the gentleman's comment earlier, don't always follow Appleton. The Appleton had adopted a wheel tax and the council said, well, why don't we take a look at the possibility of this? I felt that the first thing to do is get a pulse on where it is in the community. And the question is usually done on a five scale, you know, very supportive versus very unsupportive. You could have made it very simple, no and heck no, because that's essentially what the answer was. It was no and heck no were the, were the top two answers. And I think I used something different when I talked about it with, with staff. If you take a look at um, page 43, 48.9 percent were very unsupportive and 14 percent were somewhat unsupportive. That's over 60 percent, nearly two-thirds feel very strongly against uh, of the wheel tax. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, the last couple weeks there was a proposal getting kicked around at the state legislature about possibly giving a local option sales tax for transportation purposes. That's certainly something, if it ever comes to pass, that is another option. Um, quite honestly, between a wheel tax and that, the sales tax would likely be preferable, although I would suspect that you'd get the similar response of, of negative to it. The difference with that one is that that would be collected from everybody, not just residents of the city. The wheel tax does have a bias against residents of the city, whereas a sales tax would uh, collect from everybody. Just an observation that I made given the, the timing of this survey and that legislation. So that's out there. Interestingly enough though, with the, um, the vehicle registration fee, the wheel tax, more support was for using it for road maintenance rather than construction improvements. So that was just interesting. I think basic maintenance is more fundamental. Um, that could include uh, snow removal, those types of things. So it's just good information to have as you take it forward. <clears throat> there were, every year we give open-ended comments and because this was the last question, a lot of the open-ended comments this year focused on the wheel tax. So there were comments in there and I'd encourage you to read those. But they're, they're there. Um, some are a little more colorful than others as I'm seeing by some of the smirks on your faces. Thank you for reading the report, by the way. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but the comments are there. And I think they're in, you saw a little bit more this year um, concern about taxes. I think that's increased over the last couple of years. You need to be aware of that because ultimately that falls on you as the council. That issue's out there and it's very real. Um, some acknowledgement of improvements, but also acknowledgement that we have, have a ways to go in certain areas. Little division on certain things like economic development. If you're out of a job, you probably like an economic development a lot more than if you have a job and you don't think you, we need it. It's all a matter of perception. Those issues are there, neighborhood improvements, I think people want to see more. Um, but if you go through it, you'll see a, a comment that says, the library is a waste of money, and then literally the next comment, the library is the jewel of the city. So you will get those, you know, those comments on both sides of the aisle, and you just have to take those um, in the spirit in which they're given. Um, we got 400 people who said they felt enough, strong enough about the city to respond to this, so it's good information, and I think it'll help guide you as you make uh, important decisions over the next few months with the budget. Any questions or uh, additional observations? I, just one. I think it comes back to telling our story again. I think a lot of citizens, you know, view our streets as bad because the streets all chopped up and busted up and whatever, and it may not be in our five-year CIP, and they wonder why we can't just come in and blacktop it. And I think it's part of that whole thing is that we do a total reconstruction now on most of our streets because of the age of our infrastructure. So I think if we continue to reiterate, you know, whether it's a quarterly or something, you know, what streets are being worked on, uh, what streets are, you know, we talk a lot about that during the CIP and then, we, you know, when we approve a street, like, you know, tonight we approve some stormwater stuff. But I think that citizens have to realize that 
because of our issues and our age of our infrastructure that it's going to take longer to do some of those streets and we can't it doesn't make sense to go in there and just do a mill lay over you know grind it up because we know that the stormwater has been in there since 1890 and the sanitary sewers in there but it might not be the right timing to do that street and I know that people hate tar and gravel, so but that's our patch job. Uh, I think we could do something better, and I've had that discussion, but um, I think that's the frustrating part. And they may live on a third tier street, and they think that their street's not being addressed because of that. And so I think that's a concern. And then I all, you know, uh, I heard loud and clear about taxes. Taxes, taxes, taxes are too high for the services they get, and so. Um, <coughs> We're going to have to look at that in the budget cycle and the upcoming meetings that Mr. Peck was talking about will be very beneficial and so um, we had to sharpen the pen again this year. It might be time to cut some services and some things to keep that tax rate down as low as possible. I got a lot of that out of the survey, but it was very good, very good quality and I, I also thank the university for taking that on for us. So, thank you. Okay. Anything else on the comment? survey itself? I have another a brief, brief presentation on the strategic plan update. Um, the plan itself, the, uh, the our first report on progress to date with the strategic plan, it's going to be in your Friday packet. We're going to actually give you an electronic copy as well. The main reason, uh, in fact, I'm sorry, we, we will give you an electronic copy um, mainly because it has links that can go back to get deeper into information that you're going to see. Um, the first slide that, that Scott's putting up is an example of uh, one of the things you're going to see. You're going to be able to click for more information on some of these links that will get you more details on that. Um, it's a PDF file, but it has those links built into it, so that will be the beauty of, of getting it uh, electronically. Uh, this is just one example, but it's a status update with the objectives, the initiatives. Um, the one I, I put in there was one that we just talked about recently was our goal to get our debt below 70 percent so it gives you a specific example you're very familiar with this one so I wanted to make sure that you saw one that that was um, uh, was very recently updated and uh, it gives you some good news as well so uh, when it's when you can see it in color you see that it, we're making progress on this one so it's more the th uh, arrows up and it's green and all those positive ones um, the uh, continuous structural review of the health insurance plan, another one that we've been working on recently, so another good update. But every one of our five priority goals will be listed with an update with all of those. Um, there's also links to performance measures, which are the second slide here. This is an example of our dashboard. So you'll get, uh, this one happens to be under uh, high performing government. There's actually 16 of these. You just see eight of them in this example. So you'll be able to follow those um, and get an idea. But you can always click for more information as it shows there. Um, right now, we're, we're evolving. These are a lot of workload measures. That's not exactly you know, everything you want. You want to see outcomes-based. And I'm going to be asking staff to work on more outcome-based. But there's still some good information in here that I think you're going to like seeing. I think it's good information that, that you can share with the public. Um, it makes for great elevator speeches as you get this information in there. So um, anxious to get your feedback about it, but this is the preview of what you're going to see this Friday. May, may I add one thing with the council chamber updates, we'll be able to read the monitors in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very All well said. That's really small print. <laughs> It'll be easier to read on Friday when you can zoom it in and everything, but all the more reason to, to update, yeah. Thank you. And the last thing, just a reminder, May 30th at 9 a.m. to noon, Public Works Field Operations Facility grand opening with the ribbon cutting at 10. So uh, uh, pass the word around. We're, we're getting the word out, and uh, we'll have a little bit of demos. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. Um, show off the facility. Um, Mr. Patek will be back. Um, we've made sure he's coming back uh, to uh, okay. to be acknowledged for that. As you know, Mr. Patek retired last Friday. Mr. Godi is filling in as, as interim public works director. So, uh, uh, but we're bringing back Mr. Patek for a little bit of a uh, curtain call, so to speak. Yeah, and and just it, it, this this kind of ties into the the public works 
facility ties into the strategic plan as well as some of the results that we saw in the in the survey. This building, yes, it costs fifteen million dollars, I think, wasn't it, Steve, roughly? Yes. And you know and we are all cognizant of taxes that, you know, obviously it takes money to build those things. This was a replacement of a building that has been around since nineteen forty, had reached its obsolescence. We couldn't even get the trucks that we have now in there to service them and do things. Um, in order to prov provide the services that the community needs, and this, this, is not a this is not saying, oh, woe is me, there's nothing I, can I can't do. In order to provide the services that the community needs, we have to invest in our community and we have to, we have to build this. We built this new garage so we can service our vehicles, so we can service our, our constituents, so we can get the streets plowed and everything like that. So there is a cost to that, and so it. Uh, I just it, it just is it just so everyone connects the dots that there's nothing mutually exclusive. Yes, we would all love to pay nothing in taxes, but taxes. If you change the word tax and put it into the service, and you actually look at the services that are delivered, I think that th I, well, I don't think I know that this city delivers a very good value for the 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 uh, for your tax dollars. And, and the other thing is, is if you have questions, please get in contact with City Manager Roloff. Please contact City Council people. Please contact your, 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 uh, the department at, at, that you have the question with because get, <coughs> contact them, ask them your question. They'll get an answer to you. And you may have a totally different perspective on what you see or what you perceive. So to, to echo that, uh, Everyone talks about efficiency. Can you be more efficient and save money that way? Well, that field operations facility is one way that we're doing that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Godey, but isn't that facility now serving for what used to be done at four separate facilities throughout the city? Uh, I'm not sure the exact number, but it is allowing us to consolidate multiple facilities into one so we do not have staff and supervisors spread out over multiple jurisdictions and locations. It will improve efficiency. So. By spending money, we can improve your efficiency and reduce our overall cost, which is, I think, what everybody's concerned about when it comes to delivering services. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Um, uh, now, Deputy Mayor Peck will make a motion to go into closed session. Uh, I would move to go into closed session. The council may convene into closed session pursuant to section 19.85 parent 1 parent G to confer with legal counsel who will give legal advice concerning strategy to be adopted with respect to litigation in which the city is involved pertaining to property located at 1118 South Main Street parent the former Buckstaff property. Second. City Clerk, would you take the roll? Herman. Aye. Peck. Aye. Hansky? Aye. Stepani? Aye. Clark? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carrie Seven. I need now I now need a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Mr. Williams.